So we're going to get started, and I have wax uh, ready at the mouth, and I'll begin talking about the wax. The wax that I use, this is what I am using tonight, and it's natural beeswax. It actually smells like honey. It's a wonderful thing to work with. I usually get it with a coupon at Michael's, or if you can find a deal online at Amazon. Um, but it's wonderful. It's like it's alive. And when I trap something in wax, what I, the best I can explain it is it all becomes one. Whether it's a stamp or a rubber stamp or a piece of tissue paper or a photograph or whatever I have, once you dip it in wax, once it's encased in wax, it all becomes one. And the beeswax that I use has a warm yellow tint to it. The uh, copies that I used for my image today, these copies right here, um, are bright white. And you think, oh, well, how is that going to go with all my vintage papers? The wax will help because it coats it in a little bit of a warm glow. Now, what I used for my image is a free image that I found online. And my sister uh, in San Francisco has a site that's called This Day in Jazz Music. And she has uh, lots of resources and ways to figure out who people are. I sent her this yesterday because I knew she would know. She thought it might be Helena Bob Bonham Carter, <laughs> but it's not her. Her name is Elizabeth Bergner, and she is an Austrian actress and acting her whole life. This is a younger picture of her. I just loved her wild hair and her deep, mysterious eyes. And the fact that she had a tie on caught my eye. So what I did was I took this picture and I printed it. This is only two up, but I printed it four up on my computer. And I printed it on cardstock. And that doesn't wrinkle up as much when you get it wet with Mod Podge. So again, I used a copyright free image. I just Googled it. If you Google vintage, black and white, copyright free images, then you can come up with things like this that you can use with no worry about any legal repercussions. And I use words in my work. And I love poetry. And I love quotes from famous people. This is the quote that I used in the work that we're working on today. I don't know if you can see it very clearly. Uh, by Isadora Duncan. You were wild once. Don't let them tame you. And I thought that fit really well with this wild, wild looking girl. Again, I printed it on cardstock. And I did it lots of times. And I'm, I have five pieces that I'm working on tonight. Um, but print some extras because then you don't have to worry if one gets lost or one gets bent. Or, you know, you'll have it in your computer if you need to print more. So there I am. This was a month ago at the beach. I'm super happy but pretty blind by the bright, bright sun um, down at the lighthouse in Half Moon Bay. All right. The, the wood that I work on, this piece has some glue on it. Um, you can see someone was measuring something. This is wood from a cabinet maker shop. Now I have a cabinet maker shop here in uh, in Martinez that this is leftover. Um, I tell him what size I need. I tell him cut as many as you can. And he gives me a deal. It's sort of like going to a market though. It's never the same price, but it's always a good deal. Um, and some pretty nice wood. Again, this one has blue on it, so I'm not using it. Um, but most of them are pretty nice. And this is the thickness I get, which I think is quarter inch. I don't think it's three eighths, but you can get a variety. Also, um, my Kindle over in Benicia, um, in Arts Benicia, he has a connection with the cabinet shop also and has all different sizes um, and, and takes donations. Um, very reasonable, very helpful. All right, so let's get started. Um, the first step of what I'm working on today, so here we go. Here's one in the works. So here's Isadora Duncan that will get cut and put on the back of the piece when I'm done. 
Now I used this as a template so I could get the same arch because I made five of them. So I traced it with a fine mechanical pencil and used my scissors to cut it out. And then they're all pretty much the same, but not die cut, not like a machine cut. It still has my hand in the work. And then I use usually a magic rub, but this is a Stabler Mars white vinyl eraser to erase the pencil line. You can see the pencil line here, but here it's erased, so it's nice and clean. Okay, so I use this as a template. If you're only making one, you don't need to do that. Now I have um, scrap of paper, lots and lots of scrap of paper. Sometimes I find something that I like just as it is out of a book. This is not three different pieces. It's one piece that came that way. I did add a stamp here because there were some words in this little, um, oh, what do you call it, promotion here in this newspaper reproduction that I didn't really like. So I put that little vintage stamp in there. Here are the words cut out, ready to go. And here are a couple of vintage stamps. I was giving these stamps a whole baggie full of these stamps probably close to 30 years ago, not having any idea what I might use them for. Lo and behold, they came in very handy. I also use, these are by a company called, let's see, I always want to say Constant Comet, but they were the ones with the ceramic animals. This is Brook, Brook Bond. I think it's some kind, it's a tea company, Red Rose Tea, I believe. And so these came in a box of tea. Well, my mother-in-law, she cared for someone and she had a whole box of them. So I easily have a hundred. I might have 200. And to think that a whole box of tea would have had to be consumed to get one of these. But aren't they marvelous? And on the back, it talks about the name of this is a monarch and where it's from and how they migrate. It's a little history lesson. So these are precious to me, as are my stamps. Let me move them. All right, so here we go. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to glue our bottom piece of paper down. Now, again, this stamp is already glued. There's my wood. It's not beautiful. It'll be fine. <laughs> There's some writing from somebody that ordered something. So I'm just going to do it on this side. Now, this is pretty heavy paper. Okay, I usually put my Mod Podge on my paper so that it can grow. I don't put it on two sides, it would be too slippery. So I have Mod Podge and I have a bristle brush, pretty big bristle brush. And I have this special tool. It's not a special tool. It's from the dollar store and it's part of a spatula, but it's a really great scraper. It's nice and bendy. I know you can get all kinds of other ones, but this is my favorite and it was a dollar. So that's my favorite, that's my scraper. So I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on, making sure it's nice and goopy, but not too globby. There's some technical terms for you. Goopy, but not globby. Okay, hopefully you can see. Make sure the corners are done. Maybe count to 20. And I'm not gonna use this big brush again, so it's going in the water. Okay, wait a few more minutes. You can see it's popping up. The paper's growing. Okay, and I'd like there not to be bubbles or wrinkles. Although if it, if there is, they'll be covered up in wax. Okay, so if I disconnect it from that paper, it's probably gonna pop up a little more. Okay, here we go. I have another piece of paper that I'll put down. Oops, oh goodness, it's alive. There we go. And line it up and it will slide around a little. And spread, get all of your air bubbles out. Now, if you're using more delicate paper or um, uh, tissue or something like that, you're gonna have to be a little gentler. And I use a tool that I always have with me, which is my thumb. And I use my thumb, some of you probably have a bone, a folding tool, same thing. So this is just rounding the paper on the edge. 
Okay. And that, yes, it will end up putting a groove in my fingernail. Okay. So no bubbles. Make sure you wait so the paper can grow. And it's, it looks pretty, pretty well. Now this is glitter. The glitter will show very little by the time it's done, once it's encased or trapped in wax. Um, but this particular piece is going to be called Argyle because this reminds me of Argyle. Now that's the first step is putting that on. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put, whoops, I got my brush wet. Well, I'll use my next brush. I'm going to use this finer brush and I'm going to put a layer on top. And again, get everything wet. We need this layer on because we're going to use a Stabilo for outlining later. And if we use, um, have a nice layer of Mod Podge down. Oh, and I use matte Mod Podge. Now, some people use gel medium. Whatever you use, you have a choice. But I like matte glosses, it'll end up showing those wrinkles and bubbles that I'm talking about. So pretty good. And this will be set aside. Now, normally, if I was only working on one piece, I'd have to wait for this to dry. And I probably would wait maybe a half an hour. If it's the middle of summer, it might not take that long. What you'll see is it won't be milky and cloudy anymore. Um, for me, it's go fold a load of laundry or maybe do a load of dishes in the sink. That's usually enough time. So that's the first step of number one is putting down the ground paper on Argyle. I'm going to set this aside and I will get the next one. Okay. Okay, here's the next one. Now, I used the same girl in all of the pieces, but I have a different background. So, again, this will go on the back. There she is again. There's the words. I have some stamps, and I have this stamp I already adhered, and it covered up something that was printed on this paper. And this paper... Up here is one piece, and down here was wrapping paper. Believe it or not, that was wrapping paper. And it had a stamp right here that I didn't like the color. So that one was printed on the wrapping paper. But that one and that one, I put on the paper before I glued it down. So this is step two. And step two is to glue this uh, stamp from Ceylon. And this one, which I can't believe I didn't notice, what year is it? What crazy year are we in? 2020. So this piece is going to be called 2020. Now what I use when I'm doing smaller pieces, I'll use it. Um, you can use a CAD uh, newsprint. You can use an old phone book because I like to go off the edges. I'll show you what I'll do. So I have this little stamp here. I kind of know where I want it to go. And you can always take a picture of your setup on your camera and then you can come back and get everything where you want it to be. Again, wait a minute or two. Well, not a minute, but at least 30 seconds. You can see the paper's growing. So it's stretching, it's arched up. And now I'm gonna put that piece. Right about there. Okay, press it down. Now this is dry because I did it yesterday. Now take a little bit of my Mod Podge. Okay, and now this famous tool. Okay, then I take whatever's left on my spatula, we'll call it a spatula, and wipe it off into my water dish. So there's one down and there's no globs. Okay, kind of take a, a mental snapshot here of where that one's gonna go. And this is from, let's see if I can see what date it was. 410, I can't see. But it looks like it's old. You can buy used stamps online, on eBay and probably on Etsy. But again, I was lucky enough 
to be gifted a whole bag 30 years ago. Okay. Now you do have a little bit of wiggle room. I could slide it around if I want. Okay. Again, press down the edges. It's going to slide around a little. Use your hand. Now put a little bit of Mod Podge on top. Again, I use matte Mod Podge. Okay. Now again, I'm going to swipe with my spatula. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to scrape off the extra in my water container. Okay, now I'm going to take that piece of scrap paper or newsprint or a phone book, fold it in half, and now I've got a new surface that's not sticky. Let's see if she'll fit on there. I think she will. Scoot that up a little. All right. Now, the trick when you're doing um, a copy, if you do a laser print, it won't smear. If you do an inkjet print, it will smear. My at-home printer is an inkjet. So there's some tricks to make it, oh, uh, let's see, smear a little less. Sometimes if you print in black and white, you'll have more control. But if you print a black and white picture in color, sometimes a face might come up green. Can you see that? She looks like the Wicked Witch of the West's sister. And that was, she was not green, but the copy was green. Okay. Here we go. All right. So get all the edges, cover all the surface. And if there's any globs, try to get them out. I call it sort of like snot. If there's snot in there, get it out because you don't want to bump if you can help it. Okay. That looks good. Let it grow a little. Disconnect it from the wanting to there we go. Okay, it's growing, it's growing. Now I know in my placement I wanted to cover up the edge of that postcard. So that's my guideline. Put it down, slide it a little, line up the bottom. There we go. Okay. Press it down, start in the middle, and go out. Okay, I'm pressing it out with my hand, pressing it right into where I just mud podged. Okay, use my fingernail, rub that edge. Okay, now here's the trick, and it's always a little surprise on the first one. Now, I already know, because I've already put Mod Podge on her, so I kind of know what's going to happen. Okay. She's going to smear a little bit, but it'll be all right. Now, try to only touch your copy once with your brush. Because right now, the ink on that copy is getting activated. It's just turning a little bit pink. Okay. Now I'm going to take my spatula, my scraper, and go down once. Now, as you can see, it's kind of green. That edge and that edge. And she's got a little bit of stuff going on in her face from the smears, but I'm not going to mess with that. It's not a photograph. I like that it has some organic differences in it. So I've got, got a little bit of a bubble, bubble in there. I'm having an echo. Is everything all right? I hope so. Okay, the next thing we're going to put the words on. There we go. And maybe wash off your brush a little. Make sure that green isn't on there. Okay. Here's the second line of text. And I don't let them be straight because if 
trying to make them make them be straight. They're going to be going to be a little crooked anyway. Okay, and again, my spatula. Scrape off the extra. The second words. There we go. Okay, so that's ready to dry. Okay, um, again, there's some stuff going on, but I'm not as much as I want to go in and mess with it. If you mess with it when the paper is wet with the mod pod, it'll lift up the ink. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so again, I'm having a little echo. I don't know. I hope it's. I hope you're hearing me. Okay. All right. Now, a way to clean this, because if this isn't nice and smooth, it's going to leave a trail. It'll leave stripes, but there's a little bit of uh, glue. So I take a scrubby. You can see some stuff is coming off. And now I don't feel any bumps. Okay. Got to keep that clean. I know it's only a dollar, but. If you can use it five times, that's a pretty good deal. 20 cents a minute. All right, next step. The next step, we are going to use a Stavillo 8046 black pencil. Now, Stavillo comes in other colors. You can get a Stavillo that's brown if that goes better with your artwork. I've had great luck with a white Stabilo, but this the one I'm using today is a Stabilo 8046. And I just bought some from Blick online. Now, if they're gonna spend um, two or three dollars on a pencil and maybe three or four dollars on shipping, you might as well get more than one pencil. So I bought a dozen pencils. So that's a Stabilo. 8046 and I got black. Okay, so here's the next step. Now she you can see she looks a little purple after she's after she's dry. She's not white, white, white anymore. Do you see the difference? She's a little softer. Her image is a little softer. So I've got, I'll tell you how many pieces. This was this is my mom's music. I have my mother's music. This is scrapbook paper, different scrapbook paper, and then I repeat down here, two of my vintage stamps and one of my cool tea cards that I have, which I thought originally were geese or duck or some, something like that. No, they're from the dinosaur series. Those are dinosaur ducks, I guess. They're called fish ducks. So what I'm getting ready to do now is stabilo the edges. Now, What's going to happen? You're using your hand as a tool. This is water soluble. You see? So when you use it to do an edge, I don't want it wet, um, you're going to smear it when you're done. So I just sharpened this. And here's a tip about sharpening. If you don't already know, when you sharpen a soft lead pencil, don't turn the pencil. You're much less likely to break the lead if you turn the sharpener, okay? Someone taught me that fun trick. Okay, so how does this work? I will go around here, and I kind of go back and forth, and I'm not perfect, and I'm kind of messy. And if you mess up, I didn't bring in Q-tips in here, but if you mess up, here, we'll work, we'll work Q -tip. We'll work Q -tip. We'll work Q-tips. Okay. So that looks really dramatic and it's is that gonna to be too much? Take my finger, push down, and I'm gonna smudge it. And that little noise makes you know you're doing it right. Turn the corner, smudge, 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 smudge. 
Okay, so now I've softened the edges and kind of antiqued that little card. Okay, now if I feel like it needs a little more, go back in, pick a different finger. You have a couple that you can work with before you have to wash your hands. I'm pretty happy with that. I like I like the looks of that. Now to make this little stamp stand out, it has a perforated edge. It's got a little rip out of the corner. Now let's see, my ring finger. There we go. So I've got a card, stamps will be the same. Now this, and on a darker area, it won't show as much, but on a lighter area, like where her blouse is. Okay, let's turn it. What fingers do I have left? And probably it's one of the most important things is make sure you wash your hands <laughs> after a little bit. Because otherwise you'll just be smudging everything. Okay, I hope you can see how that kind of stands out. Now, if it, if it's too much and it goes right across the word, like I said, a, a damp, not wet, a damp Q-tip can pick it up. Now, the reason it can pick it up is because there's a layer of Mod Podge on everything. If you didn't coat everything with Mod Podge, if you wouldn't be able to get it out of old music, it would stay a stain. Okay, let's see if I can prove my point. So there. Now I need something to take it up with. My kingdom for a Kleenex. Okay, so there's a mark I made. Oops, there's my pencil. A little bit of spit, and that mark is gone. Alrighty. So I'll continue and go around my stamps. Go around my other word, go around this arch, and then I can go also between the high and low of the paper. Which is higher? Okay, the paper's higher, so I'm going to go down here. That softens that edge. Now it's getting kind of antique looking, and it's also making things stand out from each other, which is what we want, or what I want. I don't, I'm not sure what you want. Okay, there's a raggedy edge. Come in here. I'm gonna go around this arch so you can see what that will do. Now that's another reason to use cardstock when you print, when you print um, your images and your words. Because if you use cardstock, there'll be a bigger lip for you to draw against. I'm actually kind of pushing against there. All right, now my hands are pretty dirty. So let's clean off those fingers real quick. They're good. Okay, gotta make sure they're dry or it'll just be a muddy mess. There we go. There's that noise. You can go again if you want a stronger line. And if black is too strong for you, you could use brown. Brown would look nice on this one. Okay, so this one's not done. I, this words would need to be done. This would need to be done, um, but pretty close. And again, this word will hurt. This will go on the back. I could put um, Elizabeth Bergener's name on the back also, but the quote is from Isadora Duncan. And this one will be called Fishbird. Okay, I'm going to wash my fingers off again real quick. And while I've been talking, I've been getting my wax melted. And again, the wax I'm using is beeswax, natural beeswax. Okay. And the next one is one ready to be dipped. Okay, now you can see this piece of a letter, two stamps, another stamp, 
the arch, the name, the words. Now this background was one piece and it was out of a scrapbook. It has a little bit of glitter that will hardly be noticeable when the piece is done. So this one is ready to get dipped. Okay, now here's the dipping process. Let's see what I can do. Let me move some things because I'm going to be moving hot wax now. And I do have another skillet. I, I melt my wax in a skillet. And I have a second skillet, but it has a broken leg. Now, what do you think about hot wax in a skillet with a broken leg? So my skillet, the one I'm using tonight, let's see if you can see this. Can you see? It's a sunbeam skillet. We all used to have fried chicken and pork chops in it. What's cool about it, I got mine, my second one at an estate sale and my first one at the flea market. Um, what's good about them is they have a temperature on them and it'll stay constant. It won't smoke. Um, the melting point for, uh, for beeswax is pretty low. It's between 144 and 147 degrees Fahrenheit. 204 degrees is a flash point, which would mean it would combust. It would be on fire. So it's real important not just to heat it in a pot on your stove. You need something that has a thermometer on it, a thermostat on it um, for everybody's safety. All right. So this piece is going to be called Netherland. Um, I'm not sure where everyone else is from. This one might be German. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some handles on the back of this. Oh, I should tell you, this is what I usually use for my mixed media. It's a silicone sheet, and I bought them on Amazon, a two-pack. And you can mod podge and nothing sticks to it. Um, the other trick you can use is the inside of the cereal box. The wax paper in a cereal box, you can get the dust off, wipe it off with a sponge, wrap it around a piece of cardboard or masonite, um, and now you have a surface that will repel pretty darn close to a silicone mat, okay? So the back, I'd like to make some handles. Let's see what kind of luck I have here. It's painter's tape, my husband was a painter. Um, so I'm gonna make some handles so I have something to dip it into the wax and lift it out. So there's one, and it won't be perfect. Where would the fun be in that? So it'll probably be leaning, which is fine. But a real quick way to make a handle. Um, when I first learned how to do this, I was kind of dropping it in and picking it out with chopsticks, and it wasn't um, safe enough. Do you see how much that tilt is? But that's okay, because I can hold it down. But now I have something that I can take it out and flip it over. Double check you don't have any dust on the front. It's looking good. All right, let's get ready for the big, the big move. All right, things I might need at this step. After I'm done, I'm going to use a butter knife. I can scrape the edges of the wax off with the butter knife when it's cool. Um, if I need for any reason, I've got a chopstick. And if I flip my piece over and there happens to be a place that the wax didn't adhere, I can dip this in the wax and drip on with this big fat brush. Okay. Now, another thing, that, another tool you're going to need is this tool, the embossing heat tool by Marvy. Sounds like a really cool thing. Um, I have bought both of mine online on eBay used. One was $8, one was $12. They look like this, Marvy embossing heat tool. They're loud, but we will have to use that. This is what the box looks like if you're looking for it online. Marvy by Uchida, okay? Um, it will burn a hole in your plastic. It will give you a severe burn. It's super hot, but it's not a heat gun. So this works. That's all I can tell you. Um, okay, so get ready. Get ready for it's time to move the wax. Okay, wish me luck.
Going to move a couple things so I don't get tripped up. All right. So embossing heat tool by Marvy. Make sure that you have that information. Here we go. All right. I hope my cord's in the right place. <laughs> I'll know soon enough. Here we go. All right, here comes my skillet with my molten wax. And it might need to be turned up a little bit. Okay, now I did come up with a trick. And my trick is to heat the surface that I'm going to dip in wax. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is so this surface that's pretty cool hitting that hot wax, it won't um, flow as easily. So it's going to be noisy for a minute. I have my handles ready. I'm going to heat up to the touch my, my art piece, okay? I'm about four inches away, and I'm going to constantly keep my um, heat tool moving. So bear with me. Here we go. Okay, it's warm to the touch. I'm grabbing it by the handles. I'm going to push it down in the in the hot wax. Ready, set. I'm going to tuck it down and dip it in again. Okay, I didn't have any place that had a hole in it. It's got wax on it now. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to move the hot wax out of the way. One thing I didn't mention, if you have a skillet and it has a lid, keep this lid handy. If your wax caught on fire with the vent closed, you could put that lid on and it would smother it right away. Don't ever throw water on hot wax. Okay, let's see what we've got here. So there we go. I'm going to take a peek at this. Now, there's some drips. My, my big success is that there is no holes where there is no wax. And what I always shoot for when I'm doing a piece that has a, has a face in it, I want the face to be beautiful. I'm not so concerned if there's wrinkles or bubbles or blobs out here, but I want this to be beautiful. And I have to tell you, it already looks beautiful. In fact, I could not hit this with a heat gun, with a heat tool, and be happy, which has never happened before for me. So thank you for having this live online that I had such success. Um, if there were some places that were really uneven, I think it helps to heat your, your artwork first. And you saw how I dipped it and kind of slid it and dipped it and lifted it at an angle. I'm not going to mess with this. If I did, I'll show you the action. Okay, so my heat gun would be on, and I'm three inches away. The wax, when it's liquefied, will be shiny, and it will move. So if there was a bump, like a big drip or something, I could liquefy it, and it would settle down. But I always look to... The tool moving. Now, I'm not going to do it a whole lot more. I'm going to tilt it, and you can kind of see there is a drip over here on this 
stamp. Let's see if I can tilt it and maybe you can see it. I can leave it. It doesn't matter. Her face is beautiful and smooth. And that's where I'm going to be looking anyway. So this was very successful. The more I do it, the better I get. Um, if there are drips, like at the bottom, where it dripped off at the end, I can take my knife. I usually put it against my belly. And I can scrape off whatever's there. There's very little. It's not a super thick coat. If I dipped it again, it would be foggier. Already, it's more subdued. But I'm not sure if you can see, but can you see that it's incorporated? Everything is connected together. She's a little bit warmer. Um, it becomes one. It's trapped in wax. I just, I love it. Now, the next step, and I would wait until it's cool to the touch. Um, it, you can feel the back, and it's still hot. It's still warm. Um, there's two steps for finishing, and they are cheesecloth, and you buff it with cheesecloth, and I just, it, it's not cool enough. I want to do it, but it's not cool enough, so I have to wait till it's cool, and I just will do circular motions, and that kind of smooths it out, smooths it out, back and forth and back and forth, okay, and then... We'll take, this is an old t-shirt, a clean old t-shirt, and I'll do the same with this. And this will actually buff it and make it have a luster. Now, this one is very close to being done. All I'll need to do is take the handles off the back and put a hanger on. And the hangers that I use, they're an adhesive. They used to be made for plate hangers. One would go on the wall and one would go on your plate. Um, you can get them at the hardware store. Now, what I did was I flattened the hook. I flattened the hook and then I clipped it off. So now I have a one, a, a one hole hooked on here. And then I sign it and date it. I'm going to put Isidore Duncan and my business card. And that way, if it gets sent to Kansas or something... Someone can find me and say, I need some with my great aunt Olive in it, please. And she loved poodles or something. It'd be great to do custom work. So here is one that is finished. The finished piece. And I talked to you about the cheesecloth and about the tissue. Can you see the sheen? Can you see the glow and the luster? I just think it's beautiful. And to be able to say that when I made it, that's something. I'm a pretty harsh critic. So I hope that you can see the shine and the luster. Here's the back. So there's the plate hanger. I signed it. I signed it in pencil. You can sign it in a Sharpie. There's Isidore Duncan. And there's my business card. Okay. Now, this is a very easy way. No framing, no matting. But if you wanted it to be more special, you could put it in a shadow box frame. Now, I have one in the front room. If you want to hold on for just a second, I'll go get one. And you can see what it'd be like to have this in a shadow box frame. It's lined in fabric. I got these at Michael's. They're 10 by 10s. Hold on. Okay. Thank you. Michael's by Michael's. That's interesting. All right, coming back, coming back. It's a miracle I didn't trip over a cat. Okay, well, here is one. It's still wrapped in plastic. So it's actually a nine by nine. So imagine if this was set inside of this. There's linen in the back, and I would glue it to the back, get all the dust out, and then it would be protected. No one could scratch it. If you went up right now and scratched it, it would put marks in it because there's wax on it. Now, to me, that's gorgeous. That's a beautiful presentation, um, but you get to choose. And there's nothing wrong with making loads and loads of them just like this. And wouldn't it make a great series of greeting cards? Okay, just um, one thing I didn't mention. 
when we were doing the font, how did I get this font? I go on dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com, and this is a typewriter font. It's free. So if you go on dafont, you can download and, you know, get one that doesn't cost anything. That's what you're searching for. And then you can download it to your computer. And I made this with um, just on Word. I just put it on Word. All right, let me think if there's anything else. Um, are, are you ready for a few questions, Casey? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So um, one of the questions is, um, how does the wax come? Is it like in sheets or blocks or what? You can buy pellets. Now, if I turn this, can you see it's a block? Yes. It's, it's one pound. One pound of beeswax, but you can get it in pellets. This, uh, when I bought this, I think it was around $20, but I had a 50% off coupon. So that's the deal. Um, but it's, it is a beautiful thing. And I have, I still have lots left. It goes pretty far. You know, I'm, it doesn't, it's not a, a very a big amount that you use for any one piece. So, so how much, what, how much wax do you melt at a time? Like, let's say you're doing a series of say five of these pieces. Do you, you more or less want to what cover the bottom of the skillet? Well, what I did, that's a really good question. And my skillet, back in the old days, you could cook, easily cook four pieces of big French toast in my skillet. Does that give you an idea of how big the bottom is? Um, you want it to be about at least a quarter inch deep. And what I do, I melted this whole thing. And this is my second one. So I have gotten lots of pieces. And probably next time I'll break this in half and melt another half in it. And then I store it in my skillet. I just leave it in there, put it in a put it in a bag and put the lid on it when it when the skillet's cooled down. And that's where my extra wax stays. So it's ready to go the next time. So once you've melted that whole block down the first time, it will cover the um, bottom of the skillet and you can just return the and skillet ready. on and it's ready to go. Okay, that that's great. Right. So let's um we had an, another question regarding the wax. One of our, uh, Jennifer wanted to know, if can you, is it possible to put the piece on a pedestal and then pour the wax on instead of dipping it? Um, it would depend on, almost like if it had a handle on it so that you could like ladle it over it. You know, if you could hold on to whatever the thing was, um, I don't know about complete coverage is my is the only thing. Yeah. Do you know so what I mean? Different yeah. it is all the yeah. nooks and crannies. So um, the other question, we just have um, one from from Jan. First, I want to just mention Pat Calabro had asked about whether this compares to resin, and my understanding this is a more fragile surface than resin. When resin dries, it's it's completely hard. Like I said, if I ran my fingers across this, I would leave marks in this. That's why it's beautiful to see the surface, but something makes me kind of want to have it protected under glass. But you can't have glass resting on it. So, so okay, so that's from putting, yeah, and then uh, Michelle want, Brown wanted to know, um, is it possible to use a, a, a regular hair dryer on this, or not do you really need the special? Not hard enough. No, and, and um, <laughs> Michelle, I'll keep my eyes open for another one for you. Again, I found it on eBay, and I think you probably can still buy. I mean, I know people are still doing embossing with embossing powder. It's hotter than a hair dryer, but it's not as hot as a heat gun, you know, that like um, a butane torch or something like that. But it and the beeswax has such a low melting point, it happens pretty quick. But I, I don't think a hairdryer would work. I mean, I could easily burn a hole, like if I put this baggie, this baggie under here, in a second there would be a hole in this from mm -hmm. the embossing tool. Okay. So I guess one of the other questions that we've got is, um, how does the wax hold up over time? I mean, is it could be scratched. So do you ever put anything on top of the wax, like something to protect it, or is that the final surface? No, I, 
it's the final surface, and I feel that after I've heated it, like I didn't reheat this one because I I didn't um, do as much work on this one. On this one, I heated it three times, so the whole thing was wet again. And I feel that kind of makes it a little more solid, a little harder, but it's still beeswax. And 10 years from now, it's probably going to have kind of like a skin on it, but it still mm -hmm. will be beeswax. It doesn't... You know, it doesn't turn to plastic. It doesn't, you know, it's it's yeah. more fragile, like you said. I could always okay. put another coat on it, you know, if it got a scratch. Or I could hit it with the heat gun, you know, and re and remelt the whole surface. Um, I just think it's something that uh, years ago I bought a piece from Joy Broom. And when, when she delivered it to me, it was wrapped in wax paper. And she said, if you ever have to store it, store it with this. And then you probably could get rid of some minor abrasions by buffing it with the cheesecloth and then with the with the T-shirt material. Um, but it's delicate. I mean, it's that's, that's the nature of it being almost alive, I guess. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's to me, it's kind of like a living thing and and you need to protect it. So that's just something that if you, if you sold a piece, like um, I, one of these I'm giving to my sister, this one I'm actually giving to my sister, and I'll let her know, you know, don't have it above the stove. And, <laughs> and you know, uh, it's, co it's coated in wax, and wax is soft. So be careful. You know, I don't, I, I think that that's, it's not glass. If I drop it on the floor, it probably will be okay. Um, but it is a soft surface. Just think of like how a pastel is not really permanent, you know, if yeah. you you can move it around. So as long as you educate anyone that you're, you know, that you know what can happen and anyone that you give something to or you sell something to, maybe print a little disclaimer that, you know, don't have it in direct sunlight, don't have it near a heat source. Um, be careful and enjoy it. So conversely, Jan wanted to know is... You could etch the surface then because it is so soft. So if you wanted to do, you know, yes, I know Jan works in could. a very abstract manner. So if she wanted to go in and etch it, maybe do something on top of that, it would be possible, right? What's Jan's last name? Jan. Uh, you know what? I think that was Jan's I'm question. Gonna, I'm going to look on Jan. No, lots of artists will go back and inscribe into this surface. And then you can put um, uh, paint or ink. I would do like acrylic paint over it. And then you can wipe off the extra. And then where you've incised or written or put a mark in, um, the, the paint will be down in that lower level. It's a, it's a, yes, definitely you can. Definitely you can scribe into it. Yeah, Michelle Brown just contact, commented too about maybe using a stamp when the wax. I would think like, you know, when yep. the wax is still malleable, you could stamp into it. So, Or it, you could use um, a sealing wax stamp that's actually metal. And I haven't tried yeah. it, but that would be a way. Like I have one that's, I have a little sealing wax stamp that's a spiral. And it's not very deep. You know, it doesn't, it's not very deep. But let's say I used my um, my tool for making gravy that's metal, that's a spiral. What if I heated that up over my gas stove and pressed it into my, I've, I've not tried it. I would say try everything. And you might, for scribing, you, want, you might want to double dip. So you have a deeper wax layer to work with. It sounds like there's a lot you could experiment with, with this particular yeah. technique and the fact that you use that. So let's see. Um, Okay, Jennifer Granite wanted to know about the difference between using natural beeswax and, and, and encaustic wax. I don't know about encaustic wax, but I know about bleached wax. Now, I don't, the things I don't know is I don't know what the melting point is of encaustic wax. And encaustic wax, unless you tinted it, would be white. Now, not that you couldn't do that. You could make some beautiful things with white and lace and imagine it would look like snow. Um, I would say, try it, try it out. Um, but but I my big disclaimer is I don't want anyone to set anything on fire. So that's the big plus for having a skillet. The skillet has a thermometer on it, and I set it for 245. And it's not going to get hotter than that. It's not going to smoke. 
it's going to stay like right now. It's still ready. I could dip right now. And I've unplugged it a little bit ago. It, it'll stay, you know, you don't want it. You want it to stay at consistent heat so that you kind of know what's going to happen. That's, yeah. you know, that's the wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jan's thinking, wanting to know about encaustic's more toxic. Jan, my own reading on encaustic, I think it is a little bit trickier um, material than beeswax. I think it actually uh, has a higher melting point, perhaps. I Everything I've read about encaustic said don't use it in the house, whereas I think this is something you could easily do in your studio. I mean, at least I could. I'm, I'm this pretty actually careful. Smells, it, it smells lovely. It's um, it's like burning a beeswax candle. Um, yeah. yeah and, and there's, it's not a, I have a lot of breathing issues, and if it was something, there's things that I can't do because of the, the, the scent and the, the fumes, but this one, it, it's it makes me feel good to do this one. So. Yeah, it, it, pleasant kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, Casey, uh, Sharon had a question too about. She wants to know where's the chocolate. I'm not sure. Sharon, can you unmute and uh, elaborate on your question? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Oh, sh this is Sharon Peterson. Um, here we go. Is that good? Was that quick enough? Oh. There it is. <laughs> tell tell everyone the story of the talk. Oh, I'll just say it super quickly and thank you so much. That makes me smile really hard. Um, years and years ago, I had a dream. I was pregnant and I wasn't teaching and I wasn't painting and I had a dream and I thought, am I ever gonna am I ever gonna paint again? And I had a dream and Joy Broom in my dream came to my house and she said Come with me. I have the answer. So I went with her in my dream to her house, to her studio. And I'd never been to her house. It's her studios under her house. And she turned around and she had a package of drost, half dark chocolate, half white chocolate um, wafers. They came in an octagon box. And she said, the answer is chocolate. And from that time on, and again, I've taught for 23, 24 years, only twice have I not had chocolate so oh. for my students. So that, Sharon, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. It's right here. It's right now. That is, um, I remember but, it well. Every class we had chocolate. Oh, <laughs> what, that is wonderful. What I, what I took that to mean, how is the answer chocolate? Because it's easy and because I love it. And it should be hard. So have a piece of chocolate. Um, I wanted to show you one more thing. And I think you'll be able to see them. Here's a little series <laughs> that I'm doing. Pretty. Now this, this is stamps and ink and foil paper. And then one thing to hit it off with the bang. And some of you might have seen this before. Can you see that? Yes. That's a case. Wonderful. That's a case um, that I, there's my words, there's my image, there's stamps. Now, this isn't beeswax. I used a polyurethane spray, a, a satin finished polyurethane spray. But the sky is really the limit. And I do have um, an idea that I haven't tried yet, and it's to work larger. And I have bought a small craft iron. It's actually like an iron, ironing board iron, but it has no vents for steam. Because in my mind, if I would probably make my artwork, let's say it's 16 by 20. I don't have anything big enough and hot enough to dip that piece in, but I could brush on beeswax or pour on beeswax and then use my iron to smooth it. And it still wouldn't be perfect. I wouldn't want it to be perfect, but it's another way um, someone suggested the irons that they put wax on skis with. That's another idea. So again, use your creativity. Um, I would say try anything. And I want to invite anyone that wants to. I have a site, a Facebook page called Create in Place that I started when this whole stay at home thing began. And in the new year, I hope to be back there again, creating and have people sharing just like this. Um, and I hope to help promote the Concord Art Association because I really, really appreciate 
you having me tonight. Mm-hmm. This is the first art that I've made since last October. So thank oh. you. Well, Casey, we're so honored that you could be with us tonight. I think what a um, loss. <laughs> it, I, I think you really, really inspired a lot of us um, to do something, you know, kind of try something new and step out of what we're we're doing. And um, it's great. Your work is beautiful. I know I, I think I've maybe already been following Create in Place, but if not, I'm gonna join it right away. I appreciate you with a shout out for Concord Art Association. Uh, we will yeah. be, have recorded this and we will, um, once we get the video, Lisa will be in touch with you and we'll make arrangements to link it to your Facebook page so we can get a little more exposure. Perfect. But Perfect. I also want to thank all the members. Everybody can unmute now if you like and talk amongst yourself for a few minutes. But oh, Casey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for everybody who attended tonight. You guys are Mail great. the chocolate. You can mail the chocolate. <laughs> and there's the chocolate. <laughs> oh, beautiful work. Oh, that's wonderful. That is there's wonderful. So cute. Casey, um, so everyone have a you know a, a safe next couple of weeks. We'll hopefully see most all of you on the 19th if you can come and bring art. Maybe by that time somebody else will be doing some work with wax. It would be fun to yeah. see anything you create that's inspired by Casey's presentation tonight. Yeah. So does anybody have any other final questions before we sign off? No, big thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. You. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Everyone stay safe. Yeah. Bye bye.